Part 11D, to become as one settled and married through measurement. Let's finish up on the word teshvakun. Remember that the root word had a tav added to the free prefix, the place of mother's teaching. The added tav is stating that she has now marked you with the sign of her covenant as you were measured by her standard, weighed and found completed through her ways. Teshvakun is a way of life for those who have been marked by her. It isn't simply so much a choice anymore in the process of becoming, as you've become Teshvakun, as it is an extension of your being. This process of mother's teaching changes your nature, and you automatically do this action of Teshvakun as you are Teshvakun. It's what you do. When you become Teshvakun, you are in good company. I started out this teaching staying, stating that there is a measurement. In order to receive the mark of the covenant from the mother, there is a standard that she compares you to. She has two measurements. The first is tofak, and this word is the handbreadth. The root of this word is attached to mother as one of its meanings is to nurse a child as promotive of growth. Tofak means the place of wrestling, that which has been spoken by the mouth of mother that brings revelation, in order to set one apart through covenant so as not to sin. This is either met with humility of acceptance or outburst of anger. Pretty much sounds like a mother trying to instruct her child in the younger years of temper tantrums. Mother, when done correctly in love without distortions, breaks the beast attitude in us. We can actually see this in the animal kingdom as well. Remember at birth, whether human or animal, we are born as beasts and act like it until we are trained up in the way we should go. Tofak is the early portion of her teaching, the milk, and is the first place of measurement. This is the first testing to see if one has acquired the first skill that will be measured by her in order to receive her mark. Do you want to flush someone out who is self-absorbed? Say no to them or set boundaries in some form and fashion and see how they respond. You can see who has been taught the ways of mother and who is not. It is her teaching that pierces the heart so that one does not become self-absorbed with potentiality of narcissism taking root. This may seem out of order, but is pertinent to our discussion of measurement. Do you remember when I shared with you that the mother is the protector and guardian of the father's teaching revelation as represented by the hay contained in, within the root of the word? It was the intention for us to receive this in order to become the kingdom of priests and a holy nation, Melchizedek's. Melchizedek is a compounded Hebrew, Hebrew word Malki and Zedek, king and queen that has been empowered, and Zedek in righteousness. So the Malki Zedek priesthood are the royal priesthood consisting of kings and queens who are righteous. As a people, all 12 tribes of the patriarch Jacob, having been renamed Israel, we were to become Malki Zedeks at the base of Mount Sinai by the tablets Moses brought down which were the instruction manuals containing the mother and father's teachings, their covenants, that when activated upon, Shema, here and do, establishes one as being righteous through mother first, which is the hundredfold measure from the seed she planted, and then with the addition seed of father to produce the thousandfold measure. In our own ignorance, self-indulgence, and pride, it has been locked away from us, and mother has the key. Why can I say that? This is the Hebrew word for cubit, a ma. A cubit 
is the length of the human arm from elbow to fingertip, roughly about a foot and a half. Can you begin to see something here from our previous teachings? If you're not, that's okay, but it is found in the Hebrew word for cubit, ama. This Hebrew word is pronounced as ima, and it is prolonged from a word that we've seen before, em, which is a mother, but it's also properly a unit of measure or the forearm below the elbow, a cubit. It's also a door base as the bond of the entrance. This is mother who brings the revelation of father, but you must be measured first. What's astounding is that, that this is an exact representation in word of the paleopictograph of the yod. So this lets you know that this measurement is connected to the yod, which is vision. In terms of yeshav, which we've discussed before, the measuring is connected to the yod as part of mother's measurement, and it is also telling us that mother is the door base, the foundation, the place of the bond of the entrance. Doesn't this also sound like the dalit to you? The door to the revelation from the deep well that will deliver you. She is the entrance to the sheepfold as she is placed to measure you. Within this word, we see that mother's job is to bring revelation Mother casts vision through the yod in which the child would be measured by it. I will discuss the letter yod in greater detail within the next teaching. So, in other words, the child will be taught, if they receive it in humility and without defiance, what is needed to measure himself in the becoming. That is why if a child is instructed in this way of measurement, when he grows up he will not depart from it, because they say become it. It is more difficult when one attempts this process to teach an adult. Adults can be stiff-necked, which will keep them from entering in as a little child. In becoming her teaching, now access is granted to the father's teaching. As a beast, one not tamed, as a self-absorbed stiff-necked one, who does what one wants as self and only for self, father's teaching cannot be received. It is only for those who are tame, possessing meekness, with a heart's desire of service to others, having a heart that has been pierced. That is why the letter Tav, which has constituent letters combined of Tav Vav that create the symbol, has a nail and tent peg within it. Both of their teachings are intended to pierce the heart. If attempting to approach their teachings through the head brain instead of the heart brain, change will never happen. But nevertheless, the measurement still stands. 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For godly sorrow produces repentance to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Okay, so let's come back to the word which we've been discussing previously that started this whole train of thought. We have not yet left the word teshvakun. We discussed yeshav with its meanings. Now let us look, uh, take a look again at the word shav. Strong's 3427, yeshav, is seven times has been used and appears in the scripture without the yod leaving the two letters of Sheen and Bet. The number seven in biblical numerology is the number for spiritual divine completion and is stamped on every work of God. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it, Philippians 1.6. This is the consumed house and temple that dwells and remains as one who has settled, no longer wandering, and is now married. The yod was removed because they no longer needed the vision to sustain them and direct them, but rather they became it. The vision was the preparation for becoming. This is no longer about being a bride, but rather a wife. What was consumed? The beast nature within, as a son or daughter, of the commandments, 
as one who had their heart pierced, which now allows you to be married. Tesh, teshuva and slicha, repentance and forgiveness, through mother's teaching, are the prerequisites. Once you are marked with the mother's sign of the covenant, her tav, then you are ready for marriage. Forgiveness as a way of life, releasing that which holds us to our beast nature, living in tes Teshvakun. Teshvakun is the fullness of becoming the wife, one who's gone through the engagement period, now to the place of intimacy, of the fullness of the betrothal to the wedding, one who has entered into the dwelling place, the wedding chamber, always walking in forgiveness. She is marked with the sign of the mother's covenant. This is a concept that transcends the act in the flesh, but is a spiritual elevation setting you above and as apart as one who is married to and with the Creator, no longer just the bride, but now the wife. In future teachings, we will be discussing the ancient Hebrew wedding, which will help to assist in bringing this beautiful picture to life as more personal to you. Please remember that this is in the natural as well as the spiritual and is directly speaking to you, not as something distant, but today, today if you hear his voice. Through the fullness of Mother's teaching of the commandments through the Book of the Covenant plus recognition of the Hebrew letter symbols and their paleo meanings that define the journey of becoming, we are ready then to take on the responsibility that comes with earthly marriage, as well as our relationship with our Creator through covenant. Her teachings gives us the ability to rightly love God and rightly love people, esteeming others higher than ourselves, taking a humble and serving position for women and men. Philippians 2.3 says, Nothing through selfish ambition or conceit, but in the loneliness of mind, let us esteem others better than himself. Father's teaching, once one has completed the journey of mother, can be done individually, but is also a continuation of our learning within our marriages. His teaching strengthens the bonds of our earthly marriage, as well as our heavenly one, as our hearts are continually pierced through the design of the teaching as nothing is done through selfish ambition, but rather as one who is selfless, who is now bent to serve. Shalom, shalom.